Income driven student loan repayment plans are some of the most complex financial products that you can use. And I'm not even referring to just student loan products. I'm talking about in all of finance. And that's what we're going to be talking about today. What are income driven student loan repayment plans and how do you actually use them and what do you need to know about them? And before we dive into this topic, I want to share with you why this is so important. You see, back in 2007, I was actually in the mortgage industry. You might be thinking to yourself, what does the mortgage industry have to do with student loan and income driven payment plans? Well, there is these little things called PIC loans or NEG AM loans that people were using to buy houses back from like 04 to 2006, 2007. Those mortgages were blamed for the housing crisis. Those types of mortgages are the same thing, the same financial product that's being used for these income driven repayment plans. Now, if you don't understand how they work, well then you might have a, something happen to your personal finances like what happened in an 07 or 08 housing market, meaning your personal finances down the road might blow up on you if you don't know how these things work. But just like with the mortgages, if you knew how to use those mortgages, you can make a lot of money and really benefit yourself. With these income driven repayment plans, if you know how to use them, you can also take advantage. So that's what we're gonna dive into. Now, before we do, if you're new to the channel, welcome to the Fitbucks channel. I'm Joseph Frankie, the founder um, and CEO of Fitbucks. We walk through everything on this channel from student loans all the way to home buying and investments. We focus specifically on young professionals, 20 to 30 years old. If this is the first time you're here or you're a uh, returning uh, viewer of ours, but you haven't subscribed yet, please do hit the subscribe button. Uh, it helps the channel grow, helps us get the word out. It also notifies you when a new video comes out. And like I said, all of our content Content is geared to helping you get to that next level financially. So we definitely appreciate it. You'll appreciate it. And also, if you get this, make sure you share this with your friends because they'll appreciate it. Also, let's dive into income-driven student loan repayment plans. All right. So when we talk about income-driven student loan repayment plans or loan forgiveness plans, the government uses that term as a catch-all phrase to describe things like income-based repayment, which is IBR, pays you earn, which is PAYE and the new SAVE program, and so some of the older plans, ICR, which is Income Contingent Repayment Plan, but it doesn't really apply to anybody uh, these days unless you're a Parent PLUS uh, loan bar. So ICR, we kind of forget about. But Income Driven Repayment Plan, again, is IBR, PAYE, and SAVE, okay? Now, they're all different, and if you want to know the intricacies of all that, that's not what we're going through in this video. In fact, there's a playlist that is at the end of this video that details specific things that we're going to be talking about. That's one of them. The difference which is between the individual plans, that's on that playlist. So go check out that video. In this one, I want you to understand high level how these things work. Okay. Uh, first thing that you need to know is that your monthly payments are based as a percentage of your income. So every 12 months, you have to do what's called recertify your income. So that way the government knows how much you make. They recalculate your payment. That's what your payment is for 12 months. And you redo that cycle for 20 or 25 years, <clears throat> depending on which plan you're on. Okay. That's number one. Now, what ends up happening because of that payment, let's just say my payment is $300 a month, but my interest on my loans is $900 a month. So the, in, the my actual payment is not covering my interest. That's a $600 difference. Because of that, my loan balance either goes up or stays flat, okay? So when you're on one of these plans, very few people that are on these will actually have their loan balances going down. Now they call them loan forgiveness because that will happen for 20 or 25 years. And then whenever you owe, let's just say I owe like a hundred grand in 20 years, it's forgiven, it's wiped out. I don't have to pay it anymore. However, there's a tax law that is going back into effect as of right now in 2026, that says when you have this forgiven, you have to claim it as income in that tax year, which means I got to pay taxes on it. So the whole point of these plans is to pay as little as you can. You got to figure out how to manipulate that, which we're, we're going to talk about what affects your monthly payment because it's not just your income. And then you got to say, okay, well, how do I save for that tax? How do I project it? What can change it? All that information. So that's what we're going to dive into next. What's important to understand about income driven repayment plans is what can change the monthly payments because this affects you today with how much money is coming out of your pocket, but also that tax liability in the future. So that's what we're going to be talking about next. Okay. So first and foremost, 
the no brainer one is your income. So like if you have a projection, like in the calculator that I showed you earlier, it has a projection of your income. If your income is above that, then, or below that, your monthly payment is going to be higher or lower. Okay. So that puts money either out of your pocket or in your pocket sooner. Now, when it comes to the tax liability, that might affect how much you owe in taxes, because if your income increases faster than you think, your payment might be higher, you might defer less, or there might be other times where you don't defer anything. All of a sudden you're paying off your loans. So that's something that we see with MDs all the time, or lawyers or dentists or whatnot is that, or people that are, let's say making 90 grand and then they marry someone that makes 200 grand because they're an engineer. All of a sudden they're not actually deferring anything. Okay, they're actually paying off their loans. So you have to understand that as your income changes, what your monthly payment is and the potential tax liability can also change. Okay. Now, besides that, some of the, the two big ones that we see are household size. That's number one. Um, that can change because the way these things are calculated is not just a flat percentage of your income. It's an adjustments and all these things that they do. Okay. Um, household size is one of the adjustments. So the bigger your household, the lower your monthly payment lower monthly payment, potentially the higher the tax, right? That's how that works. Um, the other part of that is that if you contribute to a pre-tax retirement account, so like a 401k or 403b, that reduces your taxable income, what they call AGI. When you do that, it also reduces your required monthly payments, okay? Um, now, the last thing that we see that is big on this is for married couples. Depending on how you file your taxes, married versus separate, it will determine what your monthly payments are. The other thing that influences that is how much in federal student loan debt does your spouse also have, okay? Now, I'm not gonna go too into depth on that because we have an entire video on filing married versus separate, uh, married jointly versus separately uh, and the repercussions of that, which I'll, I'll put a link in. That's also on the playlist at the end of the video as well, okay? But those are the big things that you have to be cognizant of okay now the last part of this ta of this uh idr stuff is how do you actually save for that tax again we have an entire video on this that goes into the different ways of saving for it the bottom line that i want you to remember right now is that the number that you have to save for will change over time it changes based on tax laws. It changes based on how much you're deferring because of your income. If you're deferring at all, it depends on if you're getting married. All these things over your life will change that tax. So what I want you to remember is you can't just set it and say, I'm saving something and not think about it anymore. These things will change at least once a year because that is when you have to recertify your income. Okay. Now, the last thing I want to talk about is how do you take advantage of these income during repayment plans. Because like I said earlier, if you knew how to take advantage of those option options for mortgages, you could have made a lot of money. These are the same way. What you have to remember is that you are not trying to pay off your loans when you're going for forgiveness, okay? Therefore, you want to pay as little as you can and save for that tax liability or save for your other goals that you're trying to achieve. So how do you drop that monthly payment? Well, the best way, the most common way is contributing to a pre-tax retirement account because that will drop it. The other thing is to make sure that the loan servicer is actually doing the right household size. Um, and that's actually, by the way, one of the biggest mistakes we see is loan servicers actually miscalculating the monthly payments on this. Okay. Um, the other one is when you're getting married, do you file separately or not? That's a big one. So drop your payment, save for that tax. Okay. That is the high level IDR guide. Like I said, at the end of this video, there's a playlist. It's going to be right here next to me that goes into details on the different aspects that we just touched on. So be sure to check out that playlist. If you have any questions, put them in the comments. We'll be sure to answer it. And as always, if you're not subscribed already to the channel, be sure to 